What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here, and when it comes to learning Revit, the downside of learning Revit either in school or through courses or through YouTube, as you are probably right now, uh, is the fact that you don't really get to see what does working in a really large company, a really large architectural company, uh, look like. Now, uh, when it comes to Revit, mostly uh, if you get a job working as an architect in Revit, you're probably going to be working in an extremely large architectural firm. And uh, none of the resources, the learning resources, really teach you about what does that look like. Uh, so in today's video, I decided to team up with ATI Project, which is, well, actually a very, very large architectural company. And uh, we want to just uh, bring you uh, closer to understanding what does working in such a large company look like, what is their specific approach when it comes to projects and when it comes to working with or uh, with BIM or implementing BIM or building information modeling or Revit to be exact into their whole workflow and just what th does that uh, whole thing look like. And we're going to be opening up some of their files and exploring what do their projects uh, look like uh, in Revit and just exploring all of the all of the families and the projects and everything like that. Uh, now also uh, at the end of the video we're going to be giving away this uh, catalog of all of their projects. It's called Creating a Better Reality. So uh, one of you is going to win this and I'm going to be shipping you this. So just make sure to stick till the end of the video where I'm going to be sharing uh, details how can you apply to win this book and this giveaway. So let's get started. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Hospital of University of Southern Denmark. Uh, the project was completely developed uh, using BIM technology. Uh, now, the vision for this hospital is to become an innovative and multifunctional hospital complex with international research center and providing the areas for diagnostics, intensive care, education, as well as teaching. Uh, the project is divided into zones and phases, and we're going to be concentrating on the zone DP03, which is to be used as a public space, and zone DP04, which is to be used as a treatment facility with beds. Now, public space of the zone DP03 uh, has four floors above ground and it covers an area of over 60,000 square meters. Uh, it is the central access for the building that goes from north to south and it connects study uh, and research environments with the uh, hospital operations. Uh, being the central uh, zone, uh, DP3 allows for the dialogue and exchange between the, the two wings of uh, zone DP4 and east and west. And now the zone DP4 has five floors above ground and it covers the area of 99,000 uh, square meters. Uh, wings have been uh, dedicated spaces for a day hospital and uh, endoscopy and operating rooms. And two floors are dedicated to hospital hospitalization. Now, BIM technology was used throughout the entire process of designing, developing, and managing the project, from the preliminary design and the construction and delivery of the as-built uh, documents. Uh, this allowed to evaluate the uh, feasibility of the entire technical solution and manage time, quantity, and expenses. Uh, the building information model, or the BIM model, was composed of several sub-models uh, relating to the different disciplines. Architectural, structural engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and firefighting. Uh, it allows for everyone to view and edit different information on the project in real time, optimizing resources, cost, uh, quality, as well as time. Now, the global information model has more than 400,000 objects, and each is carrying more than 25 attributes to update and manage. Uh, this complex BIM model was constructed out of 21 different BIM models that interact with each other. Uh, for creation of the global model, uh, many different programs were used for different tasks. Uh, of course, the main uh, modeling platform was uh, the interdisciplinary uh, Autodesk Revit, in which the process flows uh, are linked with specific plugins dedicated to specific design areas. Uh, so for the computational information, 
mentioned a design part the use of Autodesk Dynamo was uh, fundamental and for rendering part and virtual uh, reality simulations the programs uh, used were Autodesk 3ds Max Lumion as well as Unreal Engine uh, for the structural uh, disciplines the analysis of loads programs used were uh, Stratus as well as Autodesk Robot and structural uh, analysis the models were shared weekly in the IFC 2x3 format, so this is the uh, industry foundation classes format that guaranteed the highest degree of inter information interoperability between different software. So if you want to have multiple different software uh, working in BIM together, IFC is the format to use. Uh, now BIM model was supported by the use of the Rofus, uh, the software that helps with planning, data management, and BIM collaborations between architects, engineers, building builders, owners, and consultants. This way, the flow of information was complete and uh, consistently updated in each design phase. Uh, now, for collaboration and communication between all users the, during the development of the project, uh, collaboration for Revit was used as a cloud service which allows for uh, the centralized access to the data and models on the cloud. Uh, the use of sharing and uh, sharing platform Autodesk BIM 360 design allowed and ensured the correct cost coordination between disciplines as well as uh, among all actors within the process of project development. Now let's take a look at what does this actually look like in practice. So here I am in Revit and I'm just going to be opening up some of the files uh, from uh, this, uh, this project and from this company. And when it opens up, this is uh, what it looks like. So I'm just going to switch to the 3D view because that's where we can probably see most. Uh, and here uh, you're probably thinking, well, why is everything uh, off to this side? Why isn't it here in the center? Well, uh, the reason for that is this should probably be coordinated, coordinated with the model. And as you can see, the model is large and this is just one segment. So this segment should be somewhere over here. But of course, when everything is fitted into that extremely large project, this is exactly in its place. Uh, so anyways, let's explore this. Now what you can do is just select one of the elements so you can kind of orbit around them. Uh, and as you can see, these are all of the all of the windows and doors uh, for this uh, project. So for each of these, these elements, it's really important that they get their uh, correct phase, they get their uh, IFC parameters, their code, uh, and so on uh, and so forth. So you can just explore all of these and then they should kind of fit and see as you can see they have their unique mark and uh, all of that important information here under IFC parameters that's where most of this uh, really important information is collected. So those were all of the doors and windows now let's take a look at all of these structural parts of the build. Uh, so if I just uh, orbit around a little bit you can see that and uh, now each floor uh, has been divided into uh, each independent prefabricated element. So for example here, uh, because we have this opening, we have to have uh, these different prefabricated elements uh, going in between. Maybe let's switch this to define a level of detail. Uh, here we have uh, just some columns, uh, the stairs. So this is what uh, such a project would look like. So uh, each field would have their own IFC file and then uh, just specialists and engineers that are uh, just employed to do prefabricated work would take the initial project and then link it up with this one and go over that project project and place their own floors and here we have some uh, beams as well structural framing and of course the the columns so uh, these are all of the all of the columns uh, used so as you can see we have different uh, different ones and finally, let's take a look at the project file for MEP. This is what that looks like. So as you can, as you can see, these projects are quite complex. And uh, because of this complexity, you have to kind of have it separated into different files. And each category should be uh, either its own file or at least their own uh, view template. Uh, so uh, as you can see here, we have so many different elements when it comes to MEP. And then uh, one of the things that, of course, uh, they have to do in these cases cases is uh, to do some clash detection and uh, uh, there are different uh, softwares that can help along the way uh, but in most cases at the end of the day uh, there is someone that needs to 
going to physically go through the model and figure out a solution for all of these uh, clashes. And also, I would like to share with you the footage from the newest ATI project office in uh, Belgrade. So if you're interested in joining the team and getting a job, uh, you can apply at their website. Or, of course, if you're interested in hiring their company uh, for some work, for some projects, uh, well, you can also contact them on their website for that as well. Okay, and that's pretty much how working in one of the on one of these extremely large projects in Revit looks like. Uh, I hope that with this video you have learned a bit more about the whole workflow and just learned what to expect uh, when it comes to working on a large project for a large company. Uh, and maybe some of you will get hired by ATI project and start working on projects such as this one. Uh, now, if you would like to win uh, this, uh, uh, win the a catalog. Uh, in order to apply, uh, make sure to go to the Instagram link below this video or just go to my Instagram page, uh, Balkan Architect, and make sure to follow uh, my Instagram page and ATI Projects Instagram page. Now uh, you can find the post that's dedicated to this video. It's going to be released at the same time as this video, and there you can find uh, the you can find the API project Instagram Instagram page. And when you like uh, or start following both their page and my page, make sure to leave a comment below a post that's going to be related to this video. So just leave a comment. Uh, type in anything that you would like, Ty uh, maybe type in something uh, about their projects if you have an opinion or if you like the project uh, or about the whole workflow in Revit and uh, what you think about it and just leave a comment and that's how you can apply to this and then we're going to be picking out a winner and, uh, and I'm going to be sending this book to the winner of that. Uh, giveaway. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. It was a little bit different. I hope you have enjoyed it. I, I think it's really important to kind of bring this closer uh, to to the to the public knowledge of what does actual work in Revit look like, uh, because uh, just the initial phase of the design is only that, the initial phase. There is so much more afterwards and I don't think that uh, people are talking about it uh, enough and I think it should be uh, maybe uh, explained a, a bit better. So that's why I decided to create this video. Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, the, this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I'll see you with, in, an, in another few days with another uh, Balkan Arctic tutorial. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.